So today's big idea is that we're going to start to shift focus a bit and look at JavaScript. Obviously, we've had two days of class so far, and we looked at HTML and CSS. But by no means are we pros at HTML and CSS. We can spend the whole, whole month or the whole three months of this class just on HTML. We can spend the whole three months of this class just on CSS, just on JavaScript. And we still wouldn't be pros. Really, a lot of this is a lifelong learning because this stuff always changes. You notice, like I said, I've got this 600-page book that I recommend, and this only focuses on JavaScript and jQuery. So you can find another 600-page book just on HTML and CSS. But uh, that's why in my uh, syllabus I recommend this book and the other book, jQuery Mobile. I think, what's it called? Uh, jQuery Mobile in 24 Hours, something like that. And then, of course, the website that I mentioned, w3schools.com, and many other websites where you can learn, continue to learn on your own. So I'm going to pull a few concepts out of this book in a bit. Uh, I'll mention page numbers if that's helpful to you. But for the moment, we're going to work with JavaScript. But first, JavaScript needs to run... Well, the way we'll do it is our JavaScript will run from an HTML file. It'll be uh, either inline or embedded, like we've talked about previously with CSS. But perhaps a little better would be that our JavaScript is external which I keep saying that's the better way, but we haven't done it yet. We're still running either CSS or JavaScript uh, inline or embedded, and later on we'll work external, which is a bit better. Um, so, to get up and running again, go to your Start menu, and we're going to search for Notepad++. Let's launch Notepad++ again. We will create, once again, a very basic HTML5 compliant skeleton and then we'll start to add JavaScript. So load Notepad++. If you are new, we are using Notepad++, which is a free software that lets us code easier. Not Notepad, that's way too limiting. Notepad++. And now that we've had another week, or two days of class and a weekend, uh, who's downloaded Notepad++ and played with it at home? All right, 10 points for you, minus 10 for everyone else. You should be working on this stuff uh, outside of class also because you use it or you lose it and that definitely applies with software especially so uh, if you'd like a seat at a computer go ahead and have a seat on a yeah. computer okay. yes. there's a I few of them. Yet, no problem before uh, before you leave let me know and I can give you the ad code so go ahead and go to notepad if you get an update message here just cancel that we get the empty, or we get the notepad uh, bug report or whatever. Go to File, New. We've done this before. So go to File, New on our brand new empty document. Let's go to File, Save As. File, Menu, Save As. I'm going to save this on my flash drive or your desktop. I've got a folder for my Android projects on my flash drive, so I'll continue to use it. And um, I'll, we'll just call it today's date, which is the 15th. September 15. And make sure your extension here is HTML, Hypertext Markup Language. Let's go ahead and save our file. And then we'll start to create our document together, but if you know how, you can get started. <coughs> so on our brand new empty document, we'll start to write our default or our basic skeleton of an HTML5 file. This should become second nature, and again, we're not going to start over every time. We're going to do it the hard way the first times. And then after that, you'll be able to do this with your eyes closed like me. Etc. Oops, close. Uh, so you want to uh, create the head, create the body. Add your meta tag. That's all we need for the moment. Eight lines. Now we'll do one more title. So 
So we can create those eight lines right there. That's enough for a basic HTML file. Then we'll just, if you're new especially, you raise your hand if you need any help. That's what I've got in the photo suite for nine months. All right, everyone. So we've seen this before. If you've been here, no big deal. Here's where we're going to get, we're going to start writing something new. We're going to add, um, we're going to add a little bit of a um, JavaScript. Previously, we saw that we had some text on the screen. We had a button. We clicked on it, and something popped up because JavaScript is the interactive layer, is the behavior layer of our project. So, um, that had a reaction. Uh, after we clicked on something, something else happened. So that was literally some reaction to something. Uh, we'll do something uh, here along those lines, but we will write a little bit more complex JavaScript. What we've got is the ability to alter what has already appeared on screen, add to it, remove from it, etc. Whereas here, if we write H1, um, and then add a heading and all of that, it's basically fixed once we check it in the web browser. But via JavaScript, we can change anything on screen. We can change that from an H2 to, from an H1 to an H2. We can change the text itself. We can add to the text and remove it. That's all via JavaScript. So here's what we'll do. Uh, just like CSS, we can add it inline, embedded, or external. We're going to add it embedded because we don't really have anything on screen, really. So inside the body tag we'll start the script tag the script block so script slash script and this basically says that everything inside these tags is JavaScript previously we had the style block we had a section where everything we wrote in there was related to style sheets. So everything that's going to go between these two tags is JavaScript. And so what we're going to do is write something on screen. So in between, here now we can start writing JavaScript. So let's write this and then I'll explain it. Document dot write open close parentheses so we're going to use parentheses a lot in JavaScript. Open and close parentheses, which are, of course, Shift 9 and 0 on your keyboard. And then we end the, the line, we end the command, the statement, with a semicolon. 
semicolons we've seen before with CSS, uh, where we had a selector, like a background color, and then a, an attribute, uh, no, a selector and a property, and then the property had a value. So background color, red, semicolon, text color, pink, semicolon, width, semicolon, etc. But here in uh, JavaScript, we're going to use that basically to terminate the statement, the command. <coughs> and previously, we saw one last time that made a pop-up happen on screen. Does anyone remember what that JavaScript command was? Alert. So this looks reminiscent, but a little different. And if you recall, in the alert, we had it say some text in the parentheses in quotes. We'll do the same thing here. So, quote, end quote, and then inside of the quotes we'll say, hello world, like before. Uh, I didn't really need this space over here. If you made a space, you can remove it or leave it. Just out of habit, I added one. But I've got 12 lines, and in the body, I've got a script block and some JavaScript. Let's go ahead and save it. And if you are new today, in order to see this result, you need to go up to the Run menu, at the top, Run, and launch Firefox. You can use any web browser you want, but we're using Firefox here, just because it's the first one at the top. Let's go ahead and write your code. Here it is again. Save it and run it save it, and then uh, run menu, launch Firefox. So 12 lines of code. What's your result? Hello world. Written on screen. There's my code so far. Again, if it didn't quite work, make sure all of the spelling is correct. Um, you want a little help? Did it work for everyone? Yeah. All right, let's double check here. Document dot write. Thank you. 
All right, so what we've written here simply then on screen writes the term hello world within the quotes. But what we've got here is something very powerful going on. So I'm going to make some notes here in my code. And we've talked about making notes, making comments in your code before. And so the CSS and the JavaScript share commenting uh, methods. Uh, we saw previously as a quick recap that to comment in HTML, we've got the we've got that idiom HTML comment. That's an HTML comment. And with CSS, we're basically going to use the same idiom in in uh, JavaScript. So in JavaScript, we had slash asterisk space asterisk slash JavaScript comment. So whereas the HTML comment is peculiar, it has a pair, but a weird pair, the JavaScript comment and CSS comment are very consistent, slash asterisk, and then the opposite, asterisk slash. People, like beginners often forget and they do slash asterisk, slash asterisk. No, it's slash asterisk, asterisk slash, mirror images. So that's a comment in JavaScript, which we will actually say multi-line because that can be broken up into multiple lines and everything between those will be a comment. Multi-line. That's in contrast to the single line which is just, if you go to the next line, two slashes with no spaces. That is a that's a J JavaScript comment single line. Only that line, line whatever here, is commented out. If I continue the next line, that will expect valid code, valid JavaScript code. And if I wanted to, then every line I could preface it with slash slash, and that's all going to be a comment. Obviously a little more efficient to start your comment and then end your comment down here somewhere, and everything in between is a comment. So we've got the slash slash for a single line comment, and then the slash asterisk pair for multi lines. And the comments again are useful to give yourself comments or to deactivate <laughs> code. There's no, there's no closure on that? Nope. It's a single line and everything until the end of the page and beyond is a single line and it needs no closing. If it makes you feel, feel better, you can do backslash, slash, slash, question mark, stop. Don't do that. Okay, so these are the way we comment. So I'm going to back up to explain this very dense uh, command that we uh, wrote a moment ago. Uh, this is going to get us into the topics, very uh, big topics of JavaScript, um, explained in one line here. Question? So there was no close feeling on that? That's right, no closing tag for the single line comment. JavaScript is what's known as an object oriented programming language. object-oriented programming language, an OOP, O-O-P. JavaScript is an object-oriented programming language. How many of you have heard of that term before, object-oriented programming? Not as many as you might think. So a lot of us are beginners with this, but we might have worked with object-oriented programming before, maybe not realized it. And what that means is we're going to deal with objects, which are constructs from the real world that we then represent in the computer world sounds obviously very esoteric, but basically we're creating models of the real, real world. Creating models of the real world. That's object-oriented programming languages. Creating models of the real world are for object-oriented programming.
So this book gives a great example. They have a house. A house is an object because it has various properties. You can do things with a house such as enter the house, lock the house. Another example is a car. A car is an object. What can we do with a car? We can drive it. We can park it. We can crash it. So we can do things with that object. In object-oriented programming, then, we create things and we do things with them or to them. And so what we've got here is something known as the document object. And we did something with it. We wrote on it. So in this example here, document is the object. And then dot write, or we'll just say write, is the method. We have an object that represents the whole document. It's called document. We have an object that represents the web browser itself. That's called navigator. Um, we can invent our own objects. And then methods. Uh, the method is, in a sense, um, this is what you can do, or the specific commands. On the document, I'm writing something. Specifically with the document, I'm writing something. I could have an H1 block in my code. And h1, I could consider it an object, and I can do various methods to it. I could do various commands to that h1, such as make it bold, make it spin, make it disappear. So I've got objects and methods that I do upon the objects. And we don't have an example on this document, but on last Wednesday, we had a, um, a, a link that we clicked on, and then an alert happened. Well, that, that click was an event. So from previously, um, do you remember we called it on click? We had on click, and then we were able to do JavaScript. So on clicked is an event. We don't have on click here, of course, but remember from last week is an event. Or uh, we could also say a trigger. So we could say further up here, I, I backed up a little bit and wrote that the document um, is an object and it's an element. It's, or a, you can almost leave it as a tag, but it's not always a tag. But it's some sort of object or element on the screen, or it doesn't necessarily have to be on the screen. For example, later we can talk about timers. We have a countdown timer. That's an object as well, and that has various methods such as we can stop the timer, we can start the timer, we can restart the timer. Those are methods of an object, the timer object. On page 31 of the book, there's, a, there's an example of a car, which is an object, and then it has various events, which are to brake or to accelerate. So here we have an event of on click. When we click something, a method is triggered. We wrote or we write to the screen. In the example in the book, when we have the event of break, then we have the method uh, slow down car. So this is how we represent real things, or uh, how we represent real things in a programming method, object-oriented programming. And then we might have various um, parameters where we further refine our method.
So I'll back up here actually, line 13. We'll say that the hello world is the parameter. You could say the details. Because if I simply had document.write, nothing would happen. I haven't given it the detail to write on screen, hello world. So that one little line that we wrote there that simply said hello world has a lot of meaning behind it. It has basically the whole concept of JavaScript built into it. Documents, I'm sorry, uh, methods and objects, parameters, and in this case there was no event, there was no explicit event of us clicking, there was an implicit event that this just happened. It wrote onto the screen. The trigger was simply that the document loaded, that the document was rendered. Previously we had a trigger that we clicked on a, on a link and it made the alert method happen. <clears throat> so let's say after all of this that we've written, line 18 or so, let's do it again. Document dot write in quotes We'll say day three, JavaScript. Save it and run it. Something should appear on screen because we're dealing with the document itself, the HTML document, we're writing to it, specifically in the quotes, that parameter. So I've got hello world, and then I've got day three JavaScript. Wait a minute. It did exactly what I told it. It wrote those two statements, but I never said anything about a new line, a new paragraph, nothing like that. So actually, valid HTML is also um, valid in the parameter, in the quotes. So let's back up and maybe make it a little bit more, uh, a little bit more uh, standard like we've seen before. These would look well as p tags as paragraphs, right? Break that into one line, break this into another line as separate paragraphs. So we just wrote here the text, but we didn't write any markup. So we're going to back up, and instead we're going to write the appropriate tags within the quotes. I'll back up to line 15. I'll add a p tag, start the p tag, close the p tag, And the same thing with day three, so add some paragraphs, paragraph tags there. looks a little better, separate lines. So even though they're in quotes, they are then rendered, these tags, they behave like HTML. So we wrote HTML inside of JavaScript, and then the web browser translated that into the paragraphs. So if I had written h1 tags here, or a tags, or list item tags, unordered lists, etc., those would render, those would convert into what we would expect. So any questions so far? All right, 
let's um, go to the next line. Make sure you're still in the script block. If you write outside of it, suddenly it's not JavaScript anymore, so it'll just display it um, raw on screen. This time, let's uh, deal with the object called the console. I won't explain what that is just yet, but now we're going to deal with the console. This is another object that's built in. The document object is built in. Uh, we will invent our own objects later on, and there's lots and lots of objects that are built in for us. Maybe that's why we would have a book to look them all up. But uh, console.log, open close parentheses, semicolon. So this is a new statement. Here I'm accessing the console object and a particular method, a particular command of the console log. And this will also allow us to write a message. So we need quotes for the parameter in the parentheses. And we'll say, hello, this is the console. Don't worry about putting in tags just yet, even though you might be tempted to, as our previous examples had. So don't worry about a p tag or anything. Just write that text and then uh, save it, launch it, let's see what happens. Console.log and then a message. Question? I gotta check if someone, nothing's coming up. Nothing's coming up? Is anything coming up for anyone else? No. Oh, just hold on one moment. Nothing at all, or or not that text that we wrote. Nothing at all. All right. Let's see this. Let's. You've got your web browser. Now it should not be nothing at all. You should still see your previous text, but what you should not see is the new text. So if nothing at all, that that's a big problem. If if nothing, if this latest text is not showing up, that's not a problem. Because what we're doing is we, we are outputting this message, but we're not outputting it to the main document where the user sees it. We're outputting it to the console, the developer's console, where only the developer can see it. And every web browser nowadays has this, but here's what we're going to start to use, especially for JavaScript debugging, to figure out our errors. Load it up, right click, inspect element. All the web browsers have a variation of this, but you can go to Inspect Element. This is in Firefox. In Chrome, you should have something similar. Inspect Element. And then in, uh, in Firefox, you'll get a bunch of stuff down here, and then something called Console. You see the tab here called Console. Click on Console. What do you see there? Hello, oh, this is the Console. Syntax error. Did anyone else get syntax error there? Mm -hmm. The syntax or the console is what's going to give us feedback on our JavaScript errors. So if you've got this correct response, you're on track. If you've got an error, call me over. So this is some this is semicolon type like statement. So what we have here is um, you started to quote mm -hmm. semicolon, but it should end after the p tag. Instead of closing, it's just a 
is normal it's on the console. Two more instances. Uh, what about over here? So another hand here. Anyone else? Over there? Okay, so all the all the web browsers have this now. This is the developer's console for the element inspector uh, on Google Chrome and uh, Internet Explorer. You can press F12 and it brings it up on. Firefox also apparently. So instead of right-clicking, inspect element, get in the habit of pressing F12 on the keyboard. It's the last F key at the top and that should quickly bring up the console, especially if you're closing your web browser completely. Instead of having to right-click, inspect element, console, you should be able to F12 on just about any modern web browser and that should bring up the console. So right now we're accessing then the object of the console, the developer's console. And this is where we can look up if there's any JavaScript errors, where we can look up comments or other developer-only content to help us troubleshoot our code. This is where we've got an element inspector, which will help us a lot later when we're going to style our document. We've got a debugger, so if you're used to other programming languages where you debug it, to check variable states and all of that complex stuff. It'll be listed here and a bunch of other stuff. But usually in this class we'll be looking at the inspector or the console. So we want to get used to the console. Just hit F12. Um, you'll still be able to pull up the console but maybe nothing shows up because we didn't do anything with it. So here we've got then two objects that we're looking at. The document object and the um, console object. Actually three objects at least because the whole web browser itself is known as the navigator object. And that has various methods we can apply such as going back and forward in history. But the concept here is that we're dealing with objects. JavaScript is an object-oriented programming language. And everything that we see on screen relates to the document object model. You're going to hear this over and over and over. The DOM, the DOM, the document object model. It'll make more sense as we go on, but basically it's everything on screen and even things that are off screen. But everything on screen is part of the document object model. That means it all stems from the original document uh, object. So a heading one on screen or a paragraph stems forth, you know, kind of like a family tree, one of those lineage family tree charts that you've got grandma and grandpa, and then they form you, and then you form them, and all of that. It all comes from a, a central trunk. So the document object model, we're going to see that over and over, that concept. So that's uh, some big concepts at the moment. Um, we're going to get much more complex, of course, but at this point, let's save our work. We'll take our first break a little bit early so that then we could uh, shift gears a bit, and then we'll start talking about getting more complex with variables and other triggers uh, and such. So save your work. It's 6.50. We'll be back at 7 o'clock. When we come back, we'll, we'll proceed.